All right, uh, this is Melissa Ryan joining you from the Golden Wellbeing Collective with my guest, Aaron Admonson. Admonson. Okay, and Erin will introduce herself here shortly. Uh, we just want to speak to the title of uh, this conversation today, which is Engage Your Dreams, Engage Your Life. Um, and so this talk is really going to be for anyone that's looking for inspiration, uh, who's, who's looking to really understand yourself better and what's really going on in your internal world and how you can tap into your genius. Uh, what what that is and, and how to really work with that in your life. So I'm going to have Erin introduce herself, um, share more about how she got into this work and, and why she's so passionate about it. Uh, and then we'll just go from there. So Erin, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for having me. Erin um, Amundsen and hello everyone. I am a depth psychotherapist and I am now hailing from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I, of course, am American, um, grew up here. Uh, but just this past fall, I moved overseas and sort of started a new trajectory of my life over there, which has been so full. Um, that could be a whole other topic for another conversation. Mm -hmm. How did I get into dream work? Great question. Actually, I would say that dream work got into me. Okay. Um, I, you know, I followed my dreams for almost as long as I can remember. I've had an interest in my dreams and in particular in my teenage years, I remember having a dream dictionary and, and looking up symbols and being really curious. And as I, as I got older, um, I started to realize that my dreams were speaking more to me and more personally to me in terms of, you know, some dreams were giving me premonitions about things that were about to happen in my life. Some dreams were nudging me in a new direction, maybe professionally or in a relationship. And then other dreams were giving me um, prompts for healing some experiences that I've had in my life. And as I started to engage more in communicating with my dreams, they actually, my dreams started to get more clear to me at the same time. Wow. Um, I, I literally had dreams about facilitating dream groups and moving my therapeutic practice into the dream world about three years ago. Um, reoccurring dreams that, that this is what I was doing. And as I began to answer those dreams, I also started to dream some of the content for these groups and um, had a really great time starting them. They, they, were a hit pretty immediately. So uh, I've come to trust the dream language as a, a definite um, move into an expression of genius, like like you described. Mm -hmm. How, Erin, when you first got started, you said you started to engage your dreams. What did that look like? What, what do you mean by starting to really work with them and communicate back? Mm -hmm. So the, the first, thing that I did that I've done for a long time is simply to write my dreams down. Most days, okay, I'm human. Some days I jump out of bed and I, I don't take the time. Um, so I, I like a paper pen journal personally, but there are all kinds of apps out there. There's one I think called Lucidity that's really good, um, where you could even speak your dream into the, the phone app and it will translate it to text. text. So it's gotten really, really easy to do that. Um, so number one, as my dreams know that I'm paying attention by writing them down, they come more frequently. A lot of the students and clients that I've worked with have reported the same thing. Um, beyond writing them down every day, there are some simple techniques. Um, one is to look at the, the various characters and images in the dream. Um, so for example, I have a dream that I share a little bit with you that I'm in a car driving, but there's no steering wheel. So what would it be like if I said, I am a car with no steering wheel? I become that image. And then I might see in my life where I actually feel that way. Oh, I feel like I am a moving vehicle with no steering, no direction. Um, other simple techniques would be to go into a little bit of a meditation and maybe interview your dream character and let your imagination just 
deliver the goods to you. Uh, so think of some questions that you might want to ask. And there are so many ways of working with dreams. We obviously can't get into most of them in this interview, but I'm always happy to share more if people are interested. What do you find, you know, as you were talking, I was like, yeah, imagination, being playful. I'm all about that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And I know like with the clients I work with, even just people I know in my life, sometimes there's barriers to even doing that. And so uh, what barriers have you seen in people engaging their dreams and how, what are some small tips you give to them about how to overcome those barriers or work around it? Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest barriers might be unconscious for a lot of people. And it's an unconscious fear of the emotional content that, that is in the dream. Um, a lot of people have recurring nightmares. And so people would say to me, well, I, I don't want to work on my dreams because they're all nightmares. And what I found is that if we go into a nightmare and use some of the techniques um, that I've developed, we can actually shift the trauma in the subconscious through that. So there's a lot of freedom to be found by sort of facing that darker aspect of ourselves that is expressing through a nightmare. Um, I think also a lot of people are have this barrier that's sort of like, well, I had this dream and it was weird and I don't think it means anything or, you know, dreams are just dreams. So I think we've gotten away from our roots with dreams. Um, and one thing that's always been interesting to me is almost every indigenous culture around the world has some recorded practice of dream work being a very important part of their spiritual development, and a very important part of managing their lives, um, being able to predict weather patterns and things like that. Um, so, so it's actually a really natural way that we all connect to our deep inner selves every night it doesn't cost us anything other than maybe maybe slowing down a little bit and taking a little bit of time with it and we can get to know ourselves on on a really deep level and you know end up changing our lives if we're just willing to listen and i, I think we're sort of trained away from those models in a lot of ways culturally we were just chatting right before we went live that we're trained to stay busy and to accomplish and to kind of be on overdrive a lot um, so those are a lot of the barriers and, and frankly, it takes being open and being willing and it takes wanting something new. It takes for a lot of people having tried a lot of other stuff that didn't work um, in order to create the life they want or to heal the, the pain that they're experiencing. And it's that surrender. Um, that's when I find people coming into my practice and into my work often say, you know what, I've tried a lot of stuff and it didn't work, so here I am. So I found you, Erin. Yeah, <laughs> <Get somehow. going. laughs> somehow. Somehow, um, I found you. And so I'm hearing some things of like, slow down, it's kind of moving into, um, which I remember when this first came up. I mean, it's come up at different parts of my life and I think I've ignored it a lot because I'm very much a doer. And and then when I do just sit with things and focus on the being, a lot happens, actually. A lot gets worked out. Um, and I think there's a challenge, if I'm hearing you right, to creating space for that or giving permission for that um, or seeing the value in that. And that a lot of spiritual practices, a lot of indigenous cultures have have always really seen the power of of stepping into the being of entering the internal world um and you uh when we talked about this topic had said that there are quite a few people who have been innovators and have really shaped our culture who 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 tapped into this could you talk a little bit about those folks and what yeah. they, how they've contributed to our world and yeah, it's one of my favorite aspects of talking about dreams, actually, um, because it gets people at least being curious most times, like, huh, really? Okay. Um, I, I think my favorite example of this is Albert Einstein. And 
if you've seen any of his quotes, you know that he values imagination and playfulness uh, over the rational mind. And yet a lot of his work was rational work, solving theorems and, and creating equations and solving, you know, a lot of the, the aspect of science in our world. Um, some people don't know this, but it's probably my favorite thing. If Albert Einstein had not solved the theory of relativity, we would not have GPS technology. Wow. We could, wow. we could not have that. Right. And I think about how much we all use that now. Um, and a lot of our other technology. A lot of people also don't know that Albert Einstein ran into a lot of stumbling blocks as he was working this theory out. And he had an intuitive sense about what he ended up ultimately proving, but he couldn't find the math. He couldn't find the equation. He couldn't find the science. He couldn't, um, in his logical, rational mind, get it. And he knew, Albert Einstein knew that dreams and dream states were incredibly powerful. Just, just knew that. You know, I'm not sure instinctively, or maybe he was like me where he had some experiences and said, oh, I dreamed something and it happened. Um, but he knew. So he used to, if he got stuck, take a nap and maybe hold a spoon in his hand so that when he dropped the spoon, it would wake him up so he wouldn't go into too deep of a sleep and receive information. Um, the theory of relativity was solved in a dream of Albert Einstein. Uh, wow. A dream that he was sledding down a hill and looking up at the sky and suddenly the relationship of the light and the stars changed and it was because he was moving at a certain speed, which was the speed of light. Um, and he saw that, you know, reality bends when we move faster than the speed of light or our perception of reality bends. So all, I mean, this, this theory is so much, has so much to do with our quantum physics today and our information about law of attraction and manifestation and how matter comes into form. Um, so he's probably my favorite example, but a, a few other quick examples would be Paul McCartney um, getting the melody for the song yesterday, or I'm sorry, let it be uh, through a dream and waking up and thinking, this is such an amazing song. There's no way that I could have just written it or that it could have come through me. I think I am subconsciously stealing another artist's work. So he was so doubtful about the same thing that so many of us doubt, right? The power of our dreams to deliver us this genius material that he went around asking all of his you know, friends and colleagues in the music industry if anyone had heard that before. And when he found out they hadn't, he was so inspired by that dream power that he thought, I, I wanna see if I can channel the lyrics. Too. So he used a dream state, and, and that's a little bit different than dreaming. It's sort of when we're awake, but maybe meditating deeper um, to write that song. And of course, we all know it's one of the best selling songs in the world to this day. So uh, those are just two. Um, you can actually Google famous people, people's dream stories and, and find a whole lot of other stories um, out there referenced on the internet. And, and so for me, I was inspired to say, hey, wait a minute, I've had the experience of my dreams meaning something too. Mm -hmm. What if I paid more attention personally? And as I paid more attention personally, I was called into teaching this professionally. As I got out of my own way, which I think is part of the work, right? Yeah. Yeah, let, uh, get creating space. I was just talking with some clients about this, that you've got to create space for things to manifest. And so when we let things go or we work through things, now there's space for something to grow, mm -hmm. for something to, sh to show up. Um, so that's really cool. So what I'm hearing you say is, that, and if we were to Google it, that there's a lot of folks um, that have been innovators. Um, actually, my partner's reading this book called Stealing Fire. Have you heard about it? I think it's up no. And it's about these dreamlike states and how it's being um, incorporated in the like military is using it and innovators at Google. And he just started reading it, but it's a lot about these altered dreamlike states and what manifests in that space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and a really important part of, of, of achievement in, in my life. So I can 
probably do most things that I put my mind to with a lot of hard work. But without the dream states kind of guiding the way, I often take a lot of wrong turns. Mm -hmm. And I'm going after something that isn't actually truly in alignment with me. And then I find that out at some point and then I have to reroute and go a different direction. And these altered states really um, help us to tap into what is the next right thing in my life? What is my next right focus? What's developing in me? What's wanting to express through me? Um, because the, the wrong thing sometimes just won't work out. So we try really hard and fail and get frustrated trying to think that's the thing that we want. Um, I, you know, if you talked to me 10 years ago and said, hey, Aaron, I think you're going to work with people's dreams one day, I would have thought you were absolutely crazy. I had no intention of even um, doing, you know, private practice therapy, but I couldn't imagine another path now that I'm in it, right? And all of this actually was indicated in my dreams, reoccurring dreams that were giving me little hints and nudges. And I've seen with clients as I as I work with clients in their dreams, the same thing happened, right? So some growth, some healing, and then a nudge down a pathway. And maybe some more growth and healing and then another nudge. So if I'm hearing you right, you're really also another way to think about this helps cultivate intuition because you start to tap into um, that deeper sense um, that is hard to be conscious of, uh, but is a, is is happening. So it's it's getting yeah. it's tapping into that and and really um, attuning to that, uh, so you can be. I mean, in in modern society, it would be more efficient um, and also just more on your true path. Like we're all trying to find our true north and. A lot of times we take a lot of missteps, um, which is part of the learning. And this sounds like it's a way to just really sync up with that path in a really, uh, I don't know, neat way, creative way. It's, it's fun. Dream work is a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of play. And mm -hmm. I think what a lot of people don't realize, unless maybe they're in the field that we're in, is that we often operate out of our unconscious wounds. So our our mind or our, our being sort of chases a path, whether it's a relationship or a career path that we think we want, mm -hmm. but we have no idea that we're chasing after it to try to maybe fill a hole in us or to try to recreate an old pattern um, that we really ultimately want to heal. And when we allow our subconscious mind to start communicating through us in our sleep and our dreams, that all that stuff starts to get revealed. And then we can say, oh my gosh, you know, I actually never wanted to be an attorney. That was so that I could prove to my dad that I'm worthy, right? Un from an unconscious place. So there are so many examples of that as well. And uh, yes, the efficiency and the intuition that you speak to are all there when you allow this stuff to come through. Yeah. Um, super cool. So, um, I guess, well, I forgot about our ask, so I'll ask the audience, um, if, you know, to, to just really reflect, if you would love to share with the group, we'd love to see this, and Erin said um, she would follow up with people's comments or messages about um, a recent dream you might have and what you think the meaning is, because what I gathered from you, Erin, is it's really about, not the content per se but about you connecting with that and making meaning um and and exploring that that that's what the process is really about yeah dreams are definitely not literal the, the subconscious speaks a different language that is metaphorical poetic image based uh the language of the soul really so and i'm the, not I don't know if you noticed this, but your camera went away. So, but we have. Oh your no! I, I see it. Hmm. Am I gone? Yes, but I hear your voice. It's very lovely. So I'm not sure what happened, but um, yeah, 
go ahead and continue and we'll just have your voice <laughs> floating in the air. Oh, I don't know where you went now. Well, uh, for those of you that are interested in learning more about, I'm not sure if Erin left, we're doing this um, from Skype, but for those of you who are interested in learning more about Erin's programs um, or what she, you know, you want to dive more into this, we'll include information from her website. Um, and then she has some workshops actually coming up in Colorado. Oh, I think you're joining us, Erin. Are you here? There you are. All right, Erin, are you joining us? You're back. Yes, great. <laughs> so I just started talking. Yeah, I mean, it's technology, right? We just work with it. Um, but what I was going to, I was sharing with the audience was that you have some upcoming workshops. So could you speak to that? Because you are visiting us in the States for a little while before you head back to the Netherlands. Yeah, I'm here through the first week in August. And um, all this work started here, so I wanted to come back and offer some workshops for some of my longtime students and clients, and would love to see some new faces. Actually, I think I already have a few new faces signed up, so I'm always loving to invite new people in. Um, I've got a, a sort of a, an evening workshop that's an intro workshop on July 11th that gives people the opportunity to explore and get their feet wet without a big commitment. So. Um, that's one. And then if you like that, there's a full day follow up on the 13th on the Saturday. Um, so you can come to one and then add the other, you can come to both. They, they will sort of be, um, you know, both in the same context of each other. And then I have a, an afternoon workshop on August 4th, um, at the Freya project in Denver. And both of these, all of these workshops are going to be giving you very specific interactive hands-on strategies mm. for both working with your sleeping dreams and your waking dreams and dream states. Um, so the intention there is that people walk away having an understanding of how this works in your life and having at least one way if you come to the intro workshop that you can engage this. If you come to the longer workshops you'll get more. So. And they also, can, if I remember correctly, you are um, can do like teletherapy. So if folks are interested, um, they can work with you um, on a more individual basis through that platform. Ooh. Yeah, I see clients one on one online um, and always offer a consultation. If anyone's just sort of curious and wants to know more uh, about this kind of work or other work that I do. And I um, also have an online dream group coming up in the fall. So that's another option that I can give more information about. Cool. Well, we, we will include all that info um, with this live. So folks, uh, you know, are interested in learning more. And, um, you know, if you know someone in your life, I hope you've benefited from this conversation. And if you know somebody that's looking for inspiration or is kind of lost in their life. Um, what I get from talking with Erin and from the little I've done with exploring my dreams, um, there's this can provide some clarity and really help um, with healing in in a kind of non-invasive way and something that can somebody can also do in a self-exploratory way or and or with the support of someone like Erin. Yes, absolutely. Well, great. Well, thank you, Erin, for joining us. And thank, thank you all uh, who watched. And uh, take care. Um, one last question of oh. you. Would you post the title of that book you referenced, The Fire Book, I, when, when yeah. you post the live for folks like me who might be interested in checking it out? I will do that, yes. Okay, so thank you. Every, everyone, stay tuned. I will also post a link to that, that book. Okay. Thanks, All right. Melissa. Thanks, Erin.